So thank you for the invitation. Yes, I'm right from the University of Braunschweig. Um, uh, I'm an architect, and uh, our team, um, to our team, belongs uh, 20 engineers of um, mechanical engineers, uh, construction engineers, architects as well, and uh, together we are working on uh, holistic projects and concepts for uh, buildings which are supplied by renewable energies. And what's most important is what everyone has said before is that this belongs to thermal comfort. That is the most main topic we have to look for to, to create those buildings. And uh, everyone starts with an old building. I start with a very old building where is uh, thermal mass one of this topic. In uh, the winter time, this mass in the background has uh, to storage the warm from the winter when the sun is coming in. And uh, during the summer period, the overhanging uh, roof keeps out the sun. So a very easy concept and uh, a very passive concept to uh, improve the um, indoor uh, thermal comfort for this. And this is, we have to transfer into a new concept, I think. So uh, I think you told that um, we are doing, we are running, uh, pr um, we proceed <coughs> with, our, with our concept, but uh, we also, we always try to, to keep um, thermal comfort by taking technical devices and we have to look what is the real impact to, to get a new concept. Um, if we talk about uh, thermal mass, I think um, there's a difference between um, uh, light uh, construction, which is shown uh, here on this curve, um, and the massive construction like this. Um, this the blue line is, is the outdoor temperature, and if it, uh, it is possible to, to include a concept with, with thermal mass and with a, a heavy construction, it is possible to get a higher difference between the, the outdoor temperature and the indoor temperature. And this is a potential, especially for uh, the night cooling, if there's a great temperature, we can cool down during the night, but, uh, and this is a potential to get a more comfortable uh, climate um, during the day. Um, if you're looking at a longer period, also that is very particularly better for, for the thermal comfort if there's a, there's a difference between uh, a light construction and a heavy construction. The difference between day and night are lesser, uh, and this is one uh, part to be uh, to get a better thermal comfort inside. When we look at the, the heat capacity or the storage capacity um, we have in, in our building, um, then there is uh, the, the passive or the massive uh, construction here is uh, about factor two uh, in comparison to water. And if we um, make or use taps here, it is to water it is a factor of four, or to the passive construction it is a factor of three and a half. So um, I think this is a great potential to include, to include for this concept, and it is necessary to have this passive construction and the massive and uh, to storage uh, this uh, capacity. For example, if we talk about uh, storage, um, it is when we compare it with a, with a battery, we have got PV system on the roof and we try to storage uh, the, um, the electricity to the current, uh, the factor is much higher. So if I come to, to the holistic um, concepts later on, um, there is a battery system about storage is a theme when we talk about uh, to leave the um, PV gains on the side. So um, the most effective uh, heat capacity or heat storage capacity is to use our construction in the building. Uh, we also do some simulation. I will show it uh, only a short time. Um, when we have uh, a new building at our university and uh, the question was, uh, do we uh, heavy construction or light construction with or without taps? This is uh, shown here. We have here this uh, simulation done with tap and without tap. And here is uh, the ventilation, the night ventilation, uh, by ratio of five, ratio of two, or not night ventilation. And um, when we have got tap, um, there is it's not necessary to have some some night ventilation. We don't uh, have it uh, to to, you, uh, to get a very good thermal comfort inside. But uh, when there is without tap, there is um, necessary to have some uh, night ventilation to get a really 
comfort uh, zone inside and not overheating. The um, balance here is about 26 degree. That is uh, the, uh, the offset. What is uh, the ratio for this figure? Um, there are many possibilities to, to include um, to, or to active the surfaces. It's, it's uh, the ceiling and uh, the floor for, for cooling as well as for uh, heating. We have sh uh, seen it before in the other speeches. Um, but for our, uh, for our work it is uh, impossible not only from the point of the thermal comfort, it has uh, got another aspect. Um, if you have got, um, the, the, if you use the heat capacity like, um, oh sorry, on, on this way, um, you can shift down your, your peak load. Um, is it here? It, here, um, we have the temperature, and the temperature uh, is the same, or nearly the way it's, it's where the outside is. And uh, when we um, take the cooling capacity or the heating capacity of the massive construction inside, we can shift our load. So the the uh, difference between the lowest and the higher temperature is lesser, and um, the blue line means the cooling load is uh, shift down from this peak. So we can avoid this peak and this has uh, um, influence on the uh, dimension of the, the cooling chiller or the heating aspect. So if we can um, make an uh, intelligent uh, management for this concept, it is possible to keep down these um, peak loads. Another aspect, and there is it's really, really uh, a part of the, the thermal comfort inside. Um, it's what you uh, told about the exergy. If we, if it's possible, to um, to realize a, a good thermal behavior inside with a low temperature uh, for heating and uh, or and uh, high temperature for cooling, uh, it is uh, a regular by themselves. The systems uh, when we uh, there's a, a floor heating system running with an operation um, temperature on about 23 degree, um, and the, the heating um, or the, the indoor temperature is wanted between 20 and 23 uh, degree. It's uh, possible to heat this building when it has got an, a good envelope, that's right, but uh, when there is um, the sun coming in, sun radiation and the temperature rise up inside up to 24 uh, or 26 degrees centigrade, the same systems has to cool for the um, for this indoor uh, environment. So you have to do nothing. You can operate this um, this floor heating with the same temperature and if there is a cooling demand it can be covered and also it has, uh, if there is a heating demand it can be covered without regulation and without measurement. I think that is a, a really good aspect when we think about uh, really rough concepts. Now we are doing concepts that are very complicated. The user doesn't know what he has to do in, this, in the building. Has he opened to window, uh, to open the window? Or is, he, is it a void to open the window? So if we uh, look for concepts which are very rough, um, it, it's very good to, to, to the user to, to operate these buildings. And uh, our thing about this is um, really also another aspect. If we combine um, the electricity gains from PV system and uh, put it into a heat pump, we can um, cover the heating demand uh, during the daytime and thermal mass uh, is one of, <coughs> one of the aspects to heat the building when there is uh, the sun radiation available. So uh, it is possible when we only uh, operate those systems with a very low temperature between 22 and 23 degrees centigrade, it is possible to rise up this um, temperature up to 25 or 26 degree during the daytime for switching off these running systems uh, during the night. So if you talk about solar fractions uh, to, to operate those buildings, it is possible uh, when we have got thermal mass and thermal storage inside. The same is when we talk about cooling. Uh, if there is sun radiation or electricity from PV uh, available, the compression chiller works to cool down 
um, the thermal mass and during the night the, the cooled uh, thermal mass gives the temperature uh, to the room. So uh, this is about an aspect if we talk about um, uh, holistic concepts based on uh, renewable energy and it is possible to have some storage uh, to put these concepts uh, on this way. Um, now I want to show a, a building where we have got a measurement, uh, done a measurement uh, since uh, 2011. It is uh, an office building from uh, Eco, from, from Infosys in Hyderabad in India. Um, and they built uh, both parts of this building with this with a conventional system. I, when I talk about conventional system, it's a system which attracts systems like the American way, great air change rate. Uh, and everything cooling demand is covered by the air change rate and the other system, the other side here is by a radiant system, so um, radiant cooling where the air change rate is reduced to the hygienic uh, need. And uh, what we have uh, seen, here's the result before, is that the radiant system has got a potential of 35% uh, uh, to be more efficient um, than the conventional system. And that uh, depends on uh, the indoor temperature in the following slide. Um, the conventional system is shown here by the red line. Um, the indoor temperature is about 23 degrees centigrade and when you switch off the systems, the uh, air change rate to reduce during the night time, the temperature rises up to uh, 25 degree and here this is the point of peak load I talked before and when the operation begins on the new day uh, they have got the peak load to cool down to uh, 30, uh, 20 degree degree. Um, the difference to the radiant system is that we have got a higher temperature about one and a half to two um, degree or Kelvin and this is the operation temperature in the radiant uh, part of this building and it is about uh, 25 degree and when the uh, operation is done when the uh, the, um, the night time begins the, the, the temperature here doesn't rise up it goes down a little bit because we have the, uh, the active the capacity of the building in use and there is no peak load uh, when the new day starts so um, we have got two potentials to reduce this energy as I shown in this slide before, 20, uh, 33, 35% uh, uh, when you look from this point or 50% when you're looking from this point. Um, this is uh, first the higher temperature and um, the uh, lower air change rate between those both systems. We have got an air change rate here by the conventional system on about 8 to 10 and the air change rate here in the, con in the radiant system is between 2 and 3. So both parts uh, make it possible uh, to reduce the energy demand for... Um, okay, thank you. Um, for operations these buildings and um, this is the same slide I shown before and the great potential is aimed to, uh, to, to shift the load here um, as the, um, the slide before shows here um, when we have got a radiant system and to use the capacity of storage inside we have got not uh, those uh, peak loads and we can shift these loads um, during day and night time and during the night time uh, we use uh, taps like this figure shows and during the daytime uh, first we use um, the air conditioning systems but with a lower uh, air change uh, rate. Um, I will show some other pictures um, because there's no much time I go through those uh, um, figures. Um, in our institute we built um, uh, our own offices we do them the design by ourselves and we call it uh, future workspace to show how it is, how is the workspace uh, from, from the future. And uh, this is our, uh, our offices inside where we can uh, show all this concept uh, you have uh, done in your simulation. We can uh, cool from the ceiling, we can cool from, from the floor, there's a, a ventilation system in the roof, we can open the window, there's an outside shading device and so on. Every system we can 
measure and we can simulate and uh, our students, architectural students often uh, can show how it works with those concepts and what is the thermal behavior inside and the other aspect is that we can ask our own colleagues what is the thermal behavior inside really and uh, I'm not agree with you that is, uh, that is uh, the background noise very good. Um, we have got uh, um, decentralized um, systems for ventilation and the most aspect they say is that this makes too much noise and we about between 38 to 40 uh, dB. Another aspect uh, we realize is that we have got many spaces for communication uh, in our uh, rooms that's shown here and uh, we covered, uh, we put down uh, the, the suspended ceiling and um, covered it by um, the system like shown here and uh, the result is that we have got um, a less uh, heat capacity by those buffers uh, around about 60 percent and if we have got uh, those um, parts of suspended ceiling it's also about the, the less heat capacity around uh, 60 percent and I think that this uh, dimension that could be uh, is, is not um, bad for, for those concepts. We built new buildings where those aspects I've shown is um, part of the total holistic concepts. These um, buildings in, in Frankfurt are built with uh, PV models in the roof and PV models on the uh, facade to cover the whole um, energy demand for um, heating, for cooling, for um, um, uh, the household uh, current and so on so to cover the whole uh, energy demand um, in total and here is um, the uh, storage the energy storage by a, a battery one aspect but the most important aspect to uh, get a very high um, solar fraction on the side is to use um, the heat capacity by the thermal mass so there are many um, buildings available I think and we are doing these uh, projects, we are doing these concepts and um, our colleagues or uh, our professor lives in this, um, this building so that we know about the concepts and we are included from the beginning until the operation for two or five years. Thank you.